Hello all my fellow drumsticks, I'm Snare. In today's video, I will be showing you how to make your own sample pack, or rather the samples that you would find in your own sample pack. In this video, I will be going through basically drums, effects, basses, sounds, all the cool stuff. Uh, if I am to pick up a list right now, I can tell you. All right, so the sounds that I made are kicks, snares, Closed hi-hats and other cymbals, toms, effects, percussion, growls, 808s, impacts, risers and downers, atmospheres, drum loops, cymbal loops, top loops, tom fills, and bass loops. All of this you can find in this video and it is all timestamped for you to watch. Alrighty, that's it. The following clips are from my Twitch showing off how to do all of this. So enjoy. Alrighty. So let me show you how to make a snare. So snares and kicks are pretty similar in the sense that they're both a release of tension. So we're going to try and replicate that using an analog. Now for the kicks, I use a wavetable but it's not really necessary. Let's start by adding a pitch drop. You can either have like one of these quick pitch drops if you want to, or you can just have one of these slower ones. And the cool thing about snares is you can pitch them however you like. So alongside this body, I'm also gonna add some noise in a different group, and you can filter your noise to give it different colors. Basically, you're trying to achieve a somewhat clap-like sound. Something like this. I can, for example, pitch it down low. And lastly, what I need is a transient, which I'm going to make using the wave table. All right, and now they're all being routed to the same lane, I can just start processing them. So I'm going to pull out a multipass, which you're not gonna be able to see. But what I'm gonna do in here is just bit crush the fundamentals so I add some nice high end. You can also play around with boosting certain frequencies to get different sounds. But yeah, that's it for how to make snares. Pretty quick, pretty short. Thank you. So a kick. How do I want to do this? I guess I'm going to go and face plant. I will be starting off with a sine wave. Now, it's really nice to always use wavetables because you can switch out, you know, the actual wavetable and you know you have a whole dimension to work with rather than just similar to analog, and the quality is basically the same. So let's start off by explaining how I'm going to make this kick. I'm going to give it the typical kick pitch drop. I haven't made a kick in a while, <laughs> which might not help, but I mean, like this. So we're, we have this pitch drop, and we need another pitch drop, because that's usually how I do my kicks. So I'm just going to have this go down, oops. Uh, just another seven semitones. I'm gonna bring this down a little just so it makes up for a bit of this. And I'm just going to start with an envelope for its volume. What's great about face plant is the fact that you can layer sounds in different groups and you have the effects section here, which is awesome because you don't really have to have that in something like Serum or Vital, I guess, too. I'm gonna make it stable because I want my noise to stay stable because I don't want every time I hit a note for it to sound a little different. So I'm going to give this a very short envelope. I'm not going to give it an LFO anymore because, because I don't need it. <laughs> and a cool way to add color to your, your noise is, is adding something like an analog So I can just FM it a little, and if I bring the pitch up, I can get some unique harmonics in this that will give the transit a bit more mm, deliciousness. So what I'm going to do is add a bit of, I'm not going to add this, I'm going to add a sampler. I'm going to look through some of my sounds. I'm just going to take a snare actually and give it some color using that. So for example, I like this. 
I'm going to high pass it because I don't want the fundamentals of the snare. Instead, I just want the crispy high end. And I also want to shorten it. And I'm going to also route you like so. All right, that sounds nice. Let's change the gain out a bit. All we really want is to add a bit of texture, like a movement. So after the k to have like a little or something after it. Yes, mouth sounds, lovely snare, doing great. So like this. And it's good that uh, it's good to keep in mind that you will probably be running this through processing. So you don't really want stuff like this, like texture and such to be too loud because you will be distorting it or doing something else to it that's going to bring it out afterward. I'm just going to add a bit of bit crush. You can hear it's adding just a touch of dirt, which is tasty. And now I'm just going to try and ODT it. Yeah, the bit crush is a bit too much. There's only so much I can do in Faceplant. And instead, I should just probably go inside of FL and start using the multitude of effects in here to shape my sound. And instead of doing that, I'm going to boost it. So what the difference between this and doing this is that when I'm boosting it inside of it, I'm basically clipping the transient, but not affecting the, the fundamental. You, you saw before, if I just turn it off, you can sort of see that the transient is a bit louder than the body. So when I turn it on, it's just leveling them out nicely. What I'm going to do next is run it for trash. Trash is a great way to just color things, no matter what you want to do. There we go. Like that. And you can also go into Convolve and just add some color with this. If you want to. Instead, I'm going to run it through a wave shaper again. I'm just going to boost it in because I want it to be sort of loud. And I can go inside of Faceplant and start changing stuff too. I think I want Moti T to boost out the noise. I might consider pitching it down an octave because I feel like it's a little too high. This is nice. Perfect. Now let's just quickly check to make sure that I don't have a kick that's similar to this. After you get a kick, all you have to do is go in it and put it on now. Select it here. Make sure to always normalize your samples. Make sure that you cut it off right at the start point. And if need be, you can also do fade so it doesn't have weird clickings. So if I just go in here and you can reread the structure in here, which just refreshes everything. We've got a tasty, tasty kick. And now I just have to do one more. But what's good about working in face plant like this is it's basically procedural. It means that you have a bunch of macros and stuff that you can just change that gives you different results. So what I could basically do is just change out some of these and then re-render it, uh, re-record it, I mean. I only have to do it once. And that's what's great about this. A thing to keep in mind while working on this is that you want to try and restart your patches. So you don't, you don't just make all of them inside of one because it's going to sound same-ish simply because of all the stuff that you use. You're not going to always change everything. So it's going to start sounding same-ish. And that's not good. Yeah, they're different enough. So yet again, I'm going to bring out a face plant. And I have designed Tom's before. I'm going to spoil something for you. I made a sample pack with a friend and it's done, we just are working on a demo song. I did make some toms and I'm not very happy with them. I mean, I'm happy with them, but I feel like I could have done better. So today I'm going to explain how to make toms better. What's great about toms is that they're very, very similar to kicks in the sense that they occupy the same 
part of the spectrum. They do the same thing, just that toms have a little bit more texture in them and they play different pitches. What I'm going to do is yet again start off with a pitch envelope. Now, the thing about toms is they can go higher than kicks. You can already hear the tominess in it. Hi, Tom. Now, what I'm going to do this time, I'm just going to add some light noise and I'm just going to put some disperser on it so it tapers it off, if you know what I mean. So yet again, similar to the kick, we're trying to get something fat. This time, though, it's a little bit more release based rather than having a thick body, as you can hear. And I'm going to texture it like so. You can sort of hear a bit of a chirping when I do that. Eh, ah, sorry. Oh my God, all the noise. Eh. You see, I feel like there's too much lumen in it. I'm just going to unboost lows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a sampler. And this is something that I did that I think is a good practice. Instead of this vanity folder, which I just keep useful stuff in, I have a folder made of transients that I just randomly generated in Faceplant. Basically hi-hats, but they're shitty. And what I can do is just actually noise and just FM it with some noise. And if I just want to brighten it up, I can just do this and boost the highs. You can also phase it. Uh, and I think I'm going to do that and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to get a multi-pass and or multi-pass. Just get the low end in here and set a bit crush on it. Because we have multi-pass, multi-pass, I can just no TT it. So let's listen to them again now that I've put them in. Clean. Let's start with closed hi-hats. So, the way that most people make hi-hats is they use white noise. And that's a valid option. So let us do that. Now, when it comes to symbols, they have a few interesting properties. They have inverted dampening. Depending on how much you know about drums and about acoustics, and if you know what dampening is, it's sort of like as the sound reverberates, it starts losing frequencies. And those frequencies that are lost, it's called dampening. With each iteration, it loses more frequencies from a certain point of the sound. So usual dampening, and it goes from high end to low end. So you lose the high end quite fast. But instead of cymbals, they're made of metal. And metal reverberates differently from how air does. The metal itself reverberates inverted, meaning that it loses the low end first and the sizzle can still be heard. So that's what we're going to try and replicate. Okay, now what's great about this is you can phase mod noise and add interesting harmonics to it. Now, alongside that, I should also add an analog to add a bit of actual texture to it. Now, when it comes to symbols, a lot of the textures in symbols can be replicated by FMing uh, squares together. Let's do that. Like this. So this is very analog sounding. Another way to change the sounds of your symbols is using frequency shifting. So what you can do is add a reverb. And similar to a real room, you want it to be sort of short. Now you can just do some fun transient shaping. So if you have FL or anything that has a convolution reverb in it, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. You can take your convolver. You can take a symbol sound that you have from a sample pack. And what I'm going to do is just stretch it. You can hear it's coloring it. Oh god, that scared me. You can run it for another convolution reverb. This one is free. Really great from Melda. I think I actually like it with that. So I'm going to record this. And this is one hi-hat. 
Now, watch this. I'm gonna go out of Edison. I don't even have to change anything. Different hi-hat. Different hi-hat. Different hi-hat. Different hi-hat. Ah. So I get a million different hi-hats from one patch, which is great. Let's start by doing like a dubstep alarm. So the way a lot of these alarms are made is using frequency shifters. If we just... So what you do is you get a ramp down. And you can sort of see you get different textures when you change the semi bitch. All right, and I'm going to try and give it some more fun textureness. And let's make some, mm -hmm, I said open hi-hats and crashes. So what's cool about these is that you can technically make all three with one patch. You make one timbre and then you get three sounds from it. Let me explain. So I'm going to follow the same, um, the same technique that I used last time. So we have the noise, the little bit of timbral stuff we want. So what's cool is you can have something like a mod wheel that controls the shape. This is just sustaining. We don't want closed hi-hats, we want just open hi-hats, crashes, and cymbals. So what's cool is you just put sustain down low, and you've already got that shape of a closed hi-hat. Change the release down. We can make it so from this, it switches into a crash, and then another one that switches it to a ride, and one that gives it some bloom. So we've got something that switches from from hi hat to uh, crash. What I'm going to also do is add something that just turns it into a ride. So right, so this is ride mode, and this is crash mode. Next up, I'm just going to add a control for some bloom. Ta-da! Just made free samples with just a bit of work. Next up, we are making percussion. Oh god. One way that I found to make good percussion pretty fast is to take some already existing percussion or folly that you recorded. What you do is you place them inside of a sampler that is able to chop up the sounds like slice X. Now what you do is first you clean out this and you just put, go to the bottom one and you go and you double them up. So we put all these here and it's going to sound horrible. And what we do is we go in here and taking a sip from my cup. There we go. And now we get tons of hits. What we do with these hits is we just fucking process them. And now we can start processing them. So we're just gonna process it similar to what you do to a bass. Hope you see it. And now you can hear the, the bit push. Start recording and just let it play for like a bit. And then I can just come in and cut, cut some of the samples out that I like and drop them into the pack. Oh, hoo 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 hoo. Well, this last one, we're making basses. So what's better than to start with a growl? <laughs> so what's great about growls is they don't necessarily have to start by making the bass sound. Instead, you can start by doing the processing and building the sound based on that loud, cool processing.
And now, because you've got that, you can just start playing around with filters and stuff. So, for example, wow, a band. You can play around with FMing and giving different qualities to your sound. And then you can just play with the pitch. Now, what you can do with this is the little magic trick, a little secret sauce. Just take it and just start processing it as if it were a, just a growl, right? What's really good about having it be sampled is that you can pitch it down. <laughs> Sounds a little weird. So let's hear the original sound, which was this. What? Holy shit, what? What just happened? Did, is that a, just a complete transformation? What? So first off, we will be starting off with how to make 808s. The idea with 808s a lot of times is that it's basically a kick that's extended in such a way that it's now a sub. Basically, to get this sort of sound, you're going to be wanting to fuse the aspects of a kick with the aspects of a bass. Like this. Like really huge releases. Now if you bring this down because it was a drum machine. You get that long sustain. Now first of all I'm gonna make an envelope for the pitch. Now to make it more interesting, you can also add a sample with some sort of texture in it. You can also have a secondary envelope with a bit more decay and release. This is going to be affecting the pitch a lot. Next up, we are making impacts. Basically, for impacts, you generally just want to have something with low thump, like a kick, run through reverb. Alongside that, you want to layer something else that gives it a little bit of mm, flair, let's say. Okay, this is good. Now, to get the high end, you can use a lot of cool things like symbols. And you can pitch it and filter it and stuff with... You can also distort them. If you like that. Next, we are doing risers. And what's cool is I'm pretty sure I can make it so I make one patch for both risers and downers. The idea behind it is that you have something that just grows in tension. I'm going to start off with a saw that I'm going to filter. Now the filter is sort of useless. So you have something like that. And then you can add little things that just give it stuttering. So on input. Now, to turn this into a downer, you literally only have to do this. <laughs> Next up, we're making atmospheres. The best way I can say you should do this is take something like a sampler and put something that sounds interesting in it. Then drench it in reverb. Literally. Easy, right? Now, if I am to look here for my presets, I already have a generator.
play PM. Just <laughs> move the drums and just leave the symbol. Let's start with a drum feel. So I'm going to set it on play. Next up, let's make a bass loop. Okay, this sounds horrible right now, I know. Okay. Alrighty, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I'm going to keep posting tutorials and cool stuff like this related to music production and such. So yeah, thank you for watching yet again. Like, subscribe, share. Goodbye.